We left off last week with this thing kind of working, but not really. It had a lot of problems. And so this week, I've spent a lot of time with it off camera because there was no logical way that I could record everything that I did to this thing because I spent many, many, many hours on it. And so we're just gonna do a little bit of recap and what I've done and where we're at. Hey guys, and welcome back to Friday for what? This week, you guys are gonna see this thing balance. I can promise you that. So let's check out where we're at so far. Okay, so we've run into a really odd problem here. Uh, look at the serial monitor and the data that I'm getting from this remote control. It's, uh, I would say, about 10% noise, which is not very good. But what I want you to notice, now this is causing serious issues. This is causing balancing problems uh, because it's jerking around. But I wa what I want you to notice is that this noise is perfectly flat on top. The bottom is all spiky, but the top of it is perfectly flat, which makes me think that this is where the value actually is, and this is the noise. So I came up with an idea. I am just going to take three readings from this. I'm going to take three readings from the RC receiver, and then just use the value that has the highest value. So let's implement that and see what it does. So I've created a function that does this call it RC fix. So just take this function here and add this into our channels before we read those values. So now it's going to run that through RC fix first and RC fix is going to take uh, three readings from the remote and just use the highest one. So I'll upload that and then we'll open up that same serial monitor. Look at that. How's that for a fixed problem? And the latency? There's almost none. So almost a complete fix with no latency. So this is getting really, really close to working, guys. Check this out. Like, it's really close. It's just starting to oscillate itself to pieces is the problem, and I think the issue might be that the O-Drive's tunings are a bit soft right now. I actually turned them down back when I was troubleshooting some other stuff, hoping to uh, eliminate some electrical noise. So I'm gonna turn the O-Drive tunings back up and see if maybe that dampens those oscillations. I think those oscillations are uh, due to it commanding a certain velocity out of the wheels and not getting that velocity and thinking that it did. So it doesn't know that it didn't actually achieve that velocity, which allows the integral band to wind up more than it should, even though the integral is at a decent setting. Um, so uh, there's two ways to go about this. One of them is to actually turn up the tunings on the O-Drive, which is my first approach. And the second approach is to stop the integral wind up in this PID controller when the motors are not at the speed that they're commanded to be. So that is the other option. So let's start with the O-Drive and we'll see where it goes from there. All right, although it is buzzing very loudly and very annoyingly, it's getting very, very stable. Now, I just cr all I did was I cranked up the O-Drive's uh, settings for the motor position. That just made it really angry grabbing the wheel like that. So you see that it's balancing all by itself. Here, I'll get you a side view. Now, some of you might be quick to point out that yes, I am using the controller in my right hand to prevent this thing from going too far because it really, really wants to. Though it is balancing, it's not exactly knowing when it's going too fast or when it has to stop. So 
This is a problem that I want to describe in detail, but before we do that, let me bring you back to the beginning. Last week, we left this project off with a serious problem with the driver scope, which is now mounted up here. You see, then I was using a library that was for the MPU 6050, but all that library did was grab the raw values from this driver scope, which is the driver scope value that I needed and the accelerometer value. And then I was doing my own type of math to those values to make something useful of them because the gyro data is very relative, but it's very accurate. And the accelerometer data is very absolute, but not very accurate. So you have to average the accelerometer data over a long period of time. And the gyro data needs to be initialized by the accelerometer data. And there's just a lot of stuff going on there. And then the gyro data will slowly drift over time. So there, there is problems with both of the sensors, but both of them together actually work really well. The problem is programming to make them work together really well. And at that time, the other problem was that the sensor would fail all the time. I, eventually, I was able to fix both of those problems. The way I fixed the noise problem was by creating this little lid for the Arduino Uno that I used to use uh, and placing the accelerometer right inside, like right next to the Uno and using the shortest wires possible to the IO of the Arduino Uno. And that fixed my problem with communications. But then I started realizing this problem that I was having with the accelerometer and the gyro and getting them both to work right so that I could start it up in any orientation and have it know exactly where its balance angle will be. It's really hard to do that, especially trying to create your own function to do that. And that's when I ran into this article about the MPU 6050 and its capabilities of something called DMP. DMP stands for Digital Motion Processing. And basically what that means is that all that math I was telling you about is not actually needed to be done in the Arduino. This has the processing capabilities right on board to do that processing right inside the IMU. And that means that I could just read the value that I want, which is the absolute value of orientation right from the IMU, which is awesome. And it's not only awesome, but the data that comes back from it is beautiful. And all you need to do to hook it up to your Arduino is connect one more pin than you had before. It has its own data buffer, which is just this data storage place on board. And as soon as that data buffer gets close to full, it pulls a pin high and tells the Arduino to read the data out of it. And it seemed like it would be that simple originally. You see, the problem was that either the DMP library or the DMP hardware doesn't quite work properly. And that means that it's really susceptible to noise. And that means that the application, which I was already having problems with noise, it just became much worse. I was able to fix the issue without using DMP by mounting the gyro closer to my Arduino board. But after I enabled DMP, it wouldn't work at all. Most of the time, if the O drive was on, it wouldn't run the sketch for more than a few seconds. It just didn't work. And that was a problem that I dealt with for quite a while. Now, I went and I tried a lot of fixes to this problem. I went adding capacitors everywhere. I went twisting my wires. I tried shielding my wires with aluminum foil. I tried wrapping my wires with copper tape. I tried shielding all of my electronics and none of those things worked. And I was just about to give up with DMP and go back to using my silly raw values when I came up with just the stupidest idea that I could possibly come up with. What if I just made another Arduino board that is this Nano and just use the Nano to read the I2C from the gyro with DMP enabled and then serial print that data from this hardware serial port into my Arduino Mega, which has more than one hardware serial port and just do it that way. So the Nano is only here being a data relay, which is really stupid, but it works. This works flawlessly. I have not had errors in DMP mode ever since I went with this setup. And I can't believe that this fixed it. And I don't know why this fixed it, but it did. The only explanation I have for why this might have worked is because this stuff is just simply further away from the O drive. And that's all I can assume. Either way, the DMP sketch wasn't too happy any time that I did things like writing a, a servo output or did something like uh, reading a servo input, which means that I wouldn't have been able to use my RC receiver or write values to the O drive anyways from the same Arduino board. For whatever reason, I couldn't get those things to work. Now, 
I would have to assume that they should work, but I don't know why they didn't, so whatever. So now we're at a point where this thing does balance, but there is one problem left, and that problem is kind of hard to describe, so just bear with me here. Let's say that you are in an environment that doesn't have temperature, vibration, uh, air molecules, things like that, just that type of environment. I think that it would be theoretically possible to balance a pencil right on its tip. And that is the basis for, I think, what's going on here. Because in the normal world, you have temperature, which is basically vibration, and you have real vibration, and then you have air molecules. And all of those things prevent you from balancing something on a fine point, or from balancing something that is inherently unstable like this. And I think that even though this PID is tuned to keep it at the angle that it's supposed to be at, if that angle isn't exactly perfect, which it can't be, this car is going to slowly accelerate in one direction until it runs out of speed and then it's going to fall over. There's no two ways about that, unless the angle at which it balances is constantly being adjusted based on the wheel speed. Which is a whole other problem in itself because let's say that it's falling this way, the wheels need to accelerate this way in order to stop it from falling that way and if you say that if the wheels are spinning, then change the balance point this way, it's just, it causes a really weird control loop that I don't know how to deal with yet. And so I'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with that control loop. And what's interesting is that I've looked at other code on the internet to see what other people are doing about this, and I don't seem to find any answers for that question. All of theirs just seem to work fine without this balance control loop thing. And I don't get that. The other thing we should talk about is that though this is right now controlled by the remote, it does actually drive forward when you pull the trigger forward and it does actually drive reverse when you pull the trigger reverse. The trigger is currently not actually controlling its speed but rather its acceleration, like I mentioned in I think the first video. And so when I pull the trigger, it goes like this and then it just keeps going. And it would drive like that until it ran out of wheel speed and then it would just fall over. I'm going to have to integrate the trigger position in with the current speed and have that adjust the commanded angle in order for this thing to drive fast when I pull the trigger and stop when I let go of the trigger. Can we just take a moment and give a big thanks to those over on uh, Patreon who are giving me the tools and the things that I need to make this thing work. Like for example, uh, this crimping tool and the little pins to connect to this stuff. Like this isn't some wiring harness that you could just buy. I made this with a kit and the crimping tool. And this allows me to do stuff like make wires extremely short to reduce the chances of electromagnetic interference or afford things like batteries from my remote, which is dead. The Arduino IDE is all like, oh, you hit the upload button, but you forgot to plug the board in? We'll see you in five minutes, sucker! One more thing. I just kind of stumbled upon this while I was working on the old balancing car. This was an accident. Um, I had accidentally set the data type up for the current angle of the old balance car up as an integer. And if you're not familiar with Arduino, it might not be immediately evident why that even matters. You see, Anytime you put a number that needs to have a decimal point, let's say for example, you want the angle that the car knows that it's at to be accurate to within less than a, than a degree. If you store that number then in an integer data type, it'll simply just remove that decimal point. I'm not sure if it rounds it, but it will remove that decimal point and you will be from then on working with a whole number, which is weird. And actually when I found that mistake, I corrected it to which I spent the next two days trying to figure out why I couldn't get it working anymore. Which is interesting that it was a mistake, but it ended up being beneficial, I just didn't realize it, and I fixed it for no reason. Now, with that, I'm assuming that the reason it was beneficial is because it provided a dead zone. It provided an area where the car would get to and it would just stop trying to spin the wheels. And so in this car, I decided to, rather than use the wrong data type, I used the correct data type, but I added my own dead zone and I can decide the size of it. Right now that dead zone is set to 0.3 degrees. So if it's within 0.3 degrees of where it thinks its balance angle is at, it's just gonna stop trying to spin the wheels. 
Now the other important part of that is that uh, the integral band should and could still be wound up with a high value in it the second that it leaves that dead zone. And so I felt it really important to zero out that integral band on the PID. So I actually went into my PID library and added my own function to it so that uh, it was my choice whether or not when that PID instruction computed, if it would go in and delete the numbers out of that integral band. And I believe that is another thing that really helped this car work. All right, guys, I hate to cut this video off so soon, but uh, we need to get it out by Friday. So uh, next week, we're going to shoot for balancing car that is controlled by the remote control and I'm hoping I can make that work. I'm hoping I can do it by next week anyway. So I guess I'll see you next time on the next Friday for what? Thanks for watching. Luckily, I'm making a new one.